About 18 months ago, we were in our caravan in Darwin and we found ourselves next to Dave Roberts and his family, who were also caravanning in Darwin. I'd never met Dave before, but he was an Englishman, so I started chatting to him, as you do at caravan sites. And it turns out that Dave is the proprietor and owner of a company called Vanilek, a company that specializes in off-grid power systems for the automotive and RV industries. So I started to pick his brain. Um, I started to talk to him about the frustrations I had with our mountain trail LXV 6.7. It has 600 amps of battery storage on, so it's got a fabulous battery capacity. But due to the limitations of the Red Arc Manager 30, I found it very frustrating getting a full charge on the battery when I was camped up off grid and even when I'm traveling with the car. So Dave took my uh, issues to heart and designed a system that would improve that. He improved the solar charging capabilities and he also improved the alternator charging capabilities from my Ram 2500. In one of our earlier episodes called Good to Great, I tried to explain what Dave had done um, and we got Dave on board to talk about what he'd done in Darwin, in the heat of Darwin. And since then he's had over 20 other caravan owners contact him and ask him to do similar upgrades to their setup. It doesn't have to be a mountain trail, it can be any caravan and you certainly don't have to have a ram to make this upgrade possible. So we're in Melbourne at the moment and it just so happened that Dave is down here in Melbourne doing similar upgrades to two other caravans. So I caught up with him and took the opportunity to film him when he was doing these upgrades and got him to explain a little bit more about what he was doing to this caravan, another mountain trail LXV 6.7. This project is to transform the charging system in this mountain trail LXV 6.7. From the factory, it's got 30 amps coming in from the vehicle. Uh, this is towed by a Ram 2500, which is capable of far, far more than that. Um, and then there's also the solar, which is handled at the moment by an excellent Victron Smart Solar 50 amp regulator. So we're going to add a few more items and I'll take you through what the job entails. So we're going to upgrade from the standard 30 amp that is fitted to 250 amp Victron Orion XS chargers. In order to do that, we need to change the cable. Now, this is uh, in Australia, what's known as 8 BNS cable, this is um, around 8 millimetres square. This is normally what you'd see fitted to your Anderson socket on the back of the car. So you'd typically have the pos and neg go into this. And this is the Anderson socket that you'll see on the back and this thin cable. That's nowhere near thick enough cable to take the kind of current we're dealing with. So this is your normal 50 amp grey Anderson socket and plug this is the one that we're going to be fitting today. This is rated for 50 amps. This is rated for 120 amps. And as I said, this is the cable that you normally see fitted. And this is what we're going to be fitting. One for the negative and one for the positive. Um, there's about 16, 17 meters in each of these reels here. And together they weigh 22 kilos. I can't lift those with one finger but I can throw this stuff around. And the reason that I use a 50 millimeter square cable and the reason the cable is so expensive is because you don't suffer from volt drop over the distance that we've got from the car all the way back to the batteries are about here on the opposite side of the van. So it's about 16 meter run. By using the 50 millimeter squared cable, we avoid volt drop. This cable's actually rated for nearly 200 amps. 250 amps in a short distance. But because the distance is so long, um, we would just start with 14 volts at the engine. By the time we get here, if we use cable that was too small, we might only have nine volts left. So the charges are not gonna work. And as you load the charges up and they start to charge, the voltage will sag and then they'll cut out. So using the proper expensive heavy cable avoids that. This is also double insulated cable. So it's got more of a PVC style inner um, and a tough outer. And then that goes in some um, split corrugated tubing as well. So not only thicker, but more durable. We're also going to add uh, an additional 20 amp Victron regulator for the solar just to take the two front panels off and put them onto this on their own. 
I also need to add, because the new regulations, some solar isolators uh, before this. So this is what this is for. And then the last thing to talk about is circuit protection. It's all well and good adding all of this stuff, but you need to make sure that should there be a short circuit or an overcurrent fault, that we're not going to end up in a fire situation. You've seen all of these fires that keep happening in caravans and they get blamed on the batteries. It's probably not the batteries, it's probably the fact that the fusing was incorrect. So on the battery in the car, normally people would fit a mega fuse like this to protect that cable. Uh, then you need a patch lead from the battery to the mega fuse, from the mega fuse to the cable. These marine battery fuses go straight onto the battery and that just lowers the resistance. If you feel one of these, they'll get really hot under 100 amps of load because you've got cables and joints. This just eliminates all of that. And then to protect the Orion excesses, we use bus barable midi link fuses. So these all daisy chain together and that keeps us all nice and safe. So new DC to DC chargers get us to 100 amps. With the addition of the additional regulator for the solar, we should be getting somewhere near in ideal conditions, 170 amps of charge into this um, 600 amp hour battery bank. So I'm gonna start and start installing some of the gear under the seats, and then we'll move on to running the cables under the caravan and under the ramp. This part of the project is to reconfigure the six solar panels that are on the roof. Currently, they are six panels all connected in parallel together, connected to one 50 amp regulator. And the regulator is quite over paneled. So I'm gonna add an additional 20 amp solar regulator and I'm gonna reconfigure the panels so that they are in three groups of two panels. Each group of two panels will be changed from parallel to series connection to boost the voltage on that group of panels. So instead of outputting around 20 volts per panel, the pair will output 40 volts for the group of two panels. Then there'll be three groups of panels outputting 40 volts. Two of those panels, the two smaller ones, will go to a 20 amp regulator and the other two groups of two panels will go to the bigger 50 amp regulator. But in order to do that, I have to work out which of all of these cables belongs to which panel. And that process basically entails covering each panel at a time with a blanket and using a voltmeter to work out where the cables all come from. Then we can rearrange them and it'll all work perfectly. We're done with this upgrade project now and there's two 50 amp DC to DC chargers installed here. Underneath this piece of the seat base there is a 150 amp bus bar that deals with all of the negative cables that come from these to the battery in the caravan and the big cable that comes from the car. These are the cables that come from the car, they're all run in through glands under the floor. So that is that part of the project finished. We've got fans in here to keep everything cool. And then just down here, 
Here's the additional small solar regulator that we fitted, and that's just to take uh, some of the load off the 50 amp regulator. This project is now finished for today, and I'm gonna summarize a little bit what I've done here. So on the car, straight from the battery to the back of the car, here is a new 120 amp Anderson connector that's fed with 50 mil square cable. That's good for 150 amps of current draw over this kind of distance. That 50 mil square cable continues here. This is the old one. This is uh, 13 mil square cable. This is now 50 mil square cable with 120 amp connector. This goes into a nice plate on the end of the drawbar, down the drawbar, up down the bottom of the caravan into the battery compartment where there are two DC to DC chargers. That gives us around 100 amps of charging capacity when the car is driving. So we've gone from 30 amps to 100 amps. Added an additional solar regulator. So now we've got a bit more control over the different sizes of panels that are on the roof. So we've increased the capacity of the solar in that way. As, as a future project, we'll probably add a few more panels at the back because there is actually more space on the roof to add a few more panels in. Uh, the, we've also been testing the solar blanket in. So that goes into the connector down here. That's all original. That's just been left how the van was. But now we can have 300 watts of solar connected on there, plus the solar on the roof as well. Obviously, when you're driving, you can't use the solar blanket unless you strapped it onto the front of the caravan and it flapped around a bit, but probably fairly useless. Um, but we now have 100 amps from the car plus all of the solar on the roof, two separate systems that can be used together at the same time. They're not one combined system, so you can only have one or the other. It's completely separate. So we've massively increased the recharge capacity of this caravan car combination as they're driving along and while they're parked up. Right, so that's it. If you want to contact Dave, I'll pop his uh, contact details on here. He's a very, very uh, keen participant in our friends and fans of Mountain Trail Facebook group. So you can also contact him on there. Catch you later.